Thank you so much. Well, welcome, everybody. Thank you. It's a beautiful day. Anytime it rains for a rancher, it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> and it's, uh, uh, it's not only a beautiful day, it's a great day for freedom and liberty in, in this land. And uh, I have really been able to enjoy it for the last almost 24 hours now. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I went home and, of course, had a... All of my grandkids and uh, my children and friends were there, mostly family, but we, we really had a nice reunion. And, uh, and I had a, my oldest son uh, cook me the nicest tender steak you've ever seen. <laughs> and, and I... Uh, he, he had a cut about an inch and a half thick, and I don't know how he got it just perfect, but he went outside and cooked it on a fire, and it was good. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sort of a little bit toothless, but I was able to just sort of chew on that and enjoy it, and I really did enjoy it. Some good Bundy beef. It was good. <laughs> you know, it's really something I'd like uh, everybody in the world to, to enjoy, is some good food. And that's what I do, is I uh, harvest uh, Southwest Desert, Nevada, the brush and the bushes and the grass. And I harvest that with my cattle, and my cattle convert that feed into an edible a commodity. Something that's good to eat, good for human <coughs> beings to eat. And uh, that's where we get our, our steak and our hamburgers, and that's what we have for dinner. And that's, that's, that's good food. Everybody in the world ought to be able to have a plate of good food every day, let's put it that way. And, uh, you know, that's really how I feel about what I fight for. I fight for the freedom for a man to be able to uh, produce and to thrive and to be happy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the only way that can be done is through freedom. One of the main things that we have in this country that a lot of countries don't have is we have the United States Constitution. It's a blueprint for this type of life that I just talked about here. It's a blueprint where we the people are the government. We the people have a republic opportunity to participate in our government. Uh, we got rid of uh, central government. We did that, and we fought the battle, and we won that battle in the Revolutionary War. We don't have to fight that battle again. That battle's already been fought. The blood and the tears and the terrible things that happened are all, have all, all they paid that price. And those people give us the United States Constitution, three branches of government. And we, the, the United States did not win this war. Neither did the colonies win this war. We, the people, fought the British government and won this war. We won our liberty and our freedoms. And we, one thing we didn't want to do in America is to ever have a central government that ruled over us and took our freedoms away. And we don't want that today either. Mm -hmm. This battle has been fought. This battle has been fought and we don't have to fight it again. We need to stand up and protect it. We will always have to protect our Constitution. We'll always have to fight for freedom and liberty. That's just part of humans. One of the, one of the mandates that's on humans, if you want to be free, if you want to be, uh, uh, have happiness, you're going to have to struggle for it. And we, we have to keep, uh, carry this on. Claim, use, and defend. That's right. And, the, and this, uh, this government that we have, this form of government that's formed under the Constitution, gives our federal government, our central government, very little power. And they have power, and they need to be able to exercise. And, you know, we, they call it one of those powers is they need to defend this nation from foreign, na uh, foreign governments. And they need to deliver the mail to us. 
they got to, they got to, they need to do things like weight and measurements. You know, we, we want to, a, a New York. There are things the federal government can do. But don't you ever let them come and act like they own the, the land within the state of Nevada or Arizona or Mexico or wherever. Here, here. You Amen. Amen. We, we're not ever going to allow that to happen, not in, the, not in America. The United States government that uh, absolutely cannot own land. Did you know that there's nothing in the Constitution that allows the United States government to own land? Yep. Correct. <laughs> the only thing, the only time we give any uh, any uh, leeway, leeway to that rule would be in the, uh, Article 1, 8, and 17, where they can come with a, approval of the legislature of the state and, and the approval of Congress, and they can pay the state for land for, for a purpose. Most of those purposes are military purposes. The only other purpose is for uh, other needful buildings. And those things would be something like a post office or a courthouse. That's the only land they could own. In Article uh, 4, they talk about the government can uh, uh, have unlimited power or make rules and regulations over other property. What other property are they talking about? Why are the Constitution or anything talking about any other property? The only other property is that property they bought from the state. Sure, they can have, over here at the Nellis Air Force Base, does any one of you American people have anything to say about what happens on that Air Force Base? Especially any of you Nevadans, any of you Clark County. Do you have anything you can say on that about that base? No. You can't tell them where to put a stop line. You can't tell them where to paint, what to paint the wall. You have no jurisdiction authority there. Who has that authority? Federal government. Con Congress has that authority to make all needful rules and regulations over their property. But over here on the desert, what authority do they have? No. No. Zero. They have no authority, no jurisdiction or authority. So, let's bring it down to a, a point here. What does Clive and Bundy say his defense is? Jurisdiction. I graze my cattle only on Clark County, Nevada land. And I have no contract with the federal government. Well, the federal government doesn't own this land, so it, let's talk about the court. What jurisdiction does this court that we just got through dealing with? What jurisdiction does this court have over this issue? Zero. 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 Okay, Zero. why? Because they don't own the land, and Clive and Buddy don't have a contract with them. I'm not a party. Mm-hmm. You know what a not a party is? Read in uh, what Article uh, or Constitution three and two. two, and you'll find out about parties. Well, I don't qualify. I'm not a party with the United States government. I don't have a contract. That's one of the biggest problems we have in this country, as we sign contract with the federal government. That's what's wrong with these all these ranchers around the country. When they go and get a grazing permit, what are they buying? Well, I'm not sure what they're buying, but I'll tell you one thing. They sign a contract and says the federal government has unlimited power over their ranch. And then they want to cry that they don't, they don't like the rules and regulations. They're buying their own shackles. They're buying their own shackles. They're taking away their liberty. They've lost their right to manage their own ranch. And they sign the bottom of the... the the paper, the document, the contract, and not more than that, you know what they do? They pay the government for that service. They sign and they pay, and I don't know if there's a lawyer in here, but I'll get you, they'll say that's a good contract. <laughs> if you sign and you pay, you're, that's a good contract. That's what these ranchers are doing. That's what our county's doing, like Clark County, Nevada, when they have a tortoise habitat conservation plan. The Endangered Species Act of the United States don't give the federal government any power to deal with in this Clark County, Nevada. The critter, the tortoise, or the, don't qualify under the Endangered Species Act. It isn't commerce coming from New Mexico or, or Mexico, or it's not interstate coming from New Mexico or wherever. It, how does it qualify the Endangered Species Act? It doesn't. That's in this habitat. It don't. It don't qualify because 
so how come they how come they got so much power? How come they're causing charging them? Because we let them. We let them. Yeah, that's why millions of dollars a mitigation fee for the say a pipeline or a or a, a power line or a road or a building permit to build a car turn. Mitigation fee. How come they're charging mitigation fee? Because we pay them. Because we yeah we pay them. But the reason why it is is Clark County signs a contract with the federal government, just like the ranchers signed a contract with the federal government. What's wrong with us? What's wrong with the ranchers? What's wrong with our county commissioners? What's wrong with the state of Nevada? They don't know their rights. And then you want to know who Bundy's mad at? Is Bundy mad at the federal government? No. No. No, I'm not mad at the federal government. Who am I mad at? The county, the county, 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 jurisdiction authority is who I'm mad at. Not the ones that don't have jurisdiction authority. I'm mad at the ones that do have jurisdiction authority. And they're the people of the Clark County, Nevada. Who does the the media says Bundy was going to stand over the federal government? Was Bundy out standing over the federal government? Bundy was protesting the county sheriff. Yep. Yep. County Sheriff protect my life, liberty, and property is what Bundy was saying. That's what everybody was coming to do is to, to, to get the government or give the get the sheriff to do his job. Yeah. And of course the sheriff he went and hid under the table. <laughs> Did you see him under there? Anyway. <laughs> he was under there. He was way under there. If, you know, if you, if you go back, and, uh, and I don't know how many of you is at the uh, uh, 2014 uh, uh, protest, and we was up on the stage and we was on the, uh, under the flags of the United States. Uh, let me talk about the flags that was up under uh, at the 2014 protest. We had two flagpoles. One flagpole had we, and the other flagpole had we, the people, on it. <coughs> that was on top of the flagpole. Mm -hmm. Underneath the flagpole, the first flag that flew on the, on, on the pole, on one side, we didn't do both sides, on one flagpole. The second flag, the flag underneath, we believe the people. What was that flag? Does anybody know what that flag was? Wasn't it the Nevada, Nevada flag? State flag? Nope, it wasn't the Nevada flag. What was it? United Don't States me. flag first. Nope. Don't tread on me. It, no, it was the Clark County, Nevada flag. Oh, that's the opposite side. We had okay. one the other one. Okay, so, so why is Clark County, Nevada sign or flag flying under we the people? Because we are the people. They're the closest government to we the people. Mm -hmm. they're, the, they're the ones we really should play, be pledged to in, a, in a one sense. We shouldn't be pledging to a, a government that has very little power. We should pledge to the government that, that's closest to us. Mm -hmm. uh, isn't that the government that we elect? Yep. And isn't that the government that we elect, uh, 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 nominate and elect the county sheriff? Isn't that the government that we pay the county sheriff to protect our life, liberty, and property? Isn't that why we're here uh, under the flag protesting the sheriff to do his job? Because he has, he's a, he represents, that first flag represents him. Mm -hmm. Represents our closest government. Mm -hmm. And we, we elected them and we pay them to do a duty. Now what's the next flag underneath that flag? State. Who knows? State flag. Okay, state it's the state of Nevada flag. We the people, the county, and the state of Nevada flag. We should be pledging allegiance to the Nevada flag. Why? So they protect us. Yeah, it's, it's a, it represents our sovereign state. It represents, the, you know, we're sovereign here. And, and the, the state has certain job or duties to do. Let's just say, like, what about a... Uh, a state highway coming down through here, don't you think it ought to have all the same 65 mile an hour speed limit? It should change every time you get to a new county. Mm -hmm. That's why we have a state government. Mm -hmm. Now what are, what's the flag underneath that flag? United States. The United, States. United States government. Why is it down on the bottom of the flagpole? And, and isn't it always tradition, isn't it, that what we mm -hmm. believe that it's supposed to be on top of the flagpole? And here Bundy has the now United States flag flying on the down half mask on the flag. What, what the heck are you trying to tell people? What is he trying to 
tell that people. That we have right. less power. power. Less power. Now, yeah. We're saying that the federal government has, we, we, uh, we all pledge allegiance to this flag. We think it's beautiful. We know what it stands for. We don't want to degrade it at all. But why is it on the bottom of the list here? Because it has very little power. It has a certain duties. Our Constitution gives it a certain duties to do. And we pledge that flag that it does that for us. We pledge that it represents our country and other nations. We pledge that it fights for our... our, our uh, the borders, protects the borders. Protects our borders. We've, we're thankful for the protection. We pledge it because of those men that have died. We, we pledge it. There's been much blood shed for our freedoms and liberty. And we protect, we pledge it because it's supposed to protect our Constitution. But I've just told you about the proper form of government. Where do we, the people, stand? Very the top. top. On top. Not the, top. Not, not, we, not the federal government. This is what the government wants to do. When we go to this court down here, where does it put the government? Right up here with unlimited power. We have, you better, you don't understand what it's like. You know, she's, you spend 700 days in one of their prisons. You'll find out you stand up against the wall with your face towards that wall and you answer every question you want or they'll shove your face right into that wall. That's how they treat people. That's how they treat we the people. That's not the way we the people in America are going to be treated anymore. Yeah. Amen. roast beef for you <laughs> and, a, and a good big slice of a good watermelon. Let me, let me mention That's something, something then, namely April 12th, 2018, four-year anniversary, and it should be a gigantic celebration. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Victory celebration. I, I found it ironic, I was thinking about this last night, 1817 of the Constitution is what we were fighting for. 1818 okay. is the day you were released. More things. You know, I, I have to give credit to where credit belongs, and I have to give that credit to my Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. My Heavenly Father has blessed me, my family, and my country many, many times. And over the last uh, three or four years, it's been continuous blessings. I want to tell you that I spent 700 days in, in prison. There was never a day that I didn't feel some spiritual uh, uh, enjoyment or relax or comfort. Never one day did I ever spend that I, I, I didn't feel his presence. And I want to tell you, the next thing I want to recognize is you people in America, even around the world, have been very good. They have supported freedom and liberty. They have supported my family. They have supported it, promoted and supported this movement. And the uh, only, only, only way I can thank you is just tell you thank you. And I do tell you thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now there's, we were scheduled to have a, con a press conference at one o'clock, and you know, Brady felt like because of the weather, and maybe we need a little more time to really come forward with something before the press know exactly where we are. He felt like we ought to postpone it for 24 hours. So tomorrow at uh, one o'clock, in front of the sheriff's office, if everything goes right. That's where we'll meet again. Uh, why are we in front of the sheriff's office? <laughs> we want to help get him out from under the table. We're going to help him. We're going to put our hands up. Tell him not to be scared. Shackles and a citizen's arrest. In, in, 2000, in 2014, who was we petitioning? The sheriff. We were petitioning the Clark County Sheriff to do his job. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be petitioning the county sheriff, where were you? And, and why, I, why have you been involved in a, a fusion 
with the federal government and the state government and the city of Mesquite and the brand inspector and on and on. Why are you fusing with these people to, to try to destroy Bundy and his ranch? Why are you doing that, Sheriff? Mm -hmm. And why, Sheriff, are you going before a federal court mm -hmm. and lying before we the people's jury? Sh County Sheriff, why are you lying before we the people in a federal court? Yeah. That question somebody needs to ask tomorrow. Right. Very much so. Anyway, I appreciate your love. And what time know. is that going to be, Clive? It's going to be where? 1 o'clock tomorrow at the, in front of the Sheriff's office. The Sheriff of Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah, Clark County. Nevada. Clark County. Sure. Sheriff, Sheriff Lombardo. Lombardo. Yeah, What's the address? 400 South Martin Luther King. Okay. Oh, wow. Same where the police department is. Yeah. There will be some yeah. tents set yeah. up, so if it rains, which is supposed to rain, but we'll be better prepared. Right. Better prepared. So rain again? Yeah. So yep. uh, don't, stop, don't, don't do that. You want <laughs> rich or water. We need grass. Okay, now, uh, are, there any, there, are there any questions that need to be asked? Yeah. I do. You're going to run for office? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I don't know what office you, uh, you'd want me to run for. Governor. <laughs> Governor. <laughs> sheriff. <laughs> let me, let me we'll all move something. to Nevada if you run let for me sheriff. Tell you I don't know who's anything about politics, I guess, but I do know one thing. In, in the state of Nevada, we need a, we need a better government. I know another thing, in Clark County, Nevada, we need a better kind of government. And I don't know what to do with the federal government. Mm -hmm. Pope Trump knows what he's doing, I guess, all I can say there. <laughs> well, the man about to run for governor, we couldn't even get to respond to the Wooten email, so. <laughs> and, you know, and that, that's, a, that's a sad thing. You mm -hmm. know, uh, I mentioned it yesterday at the press conference. Where is our county commission? Mm -hmm. I don't know, what are they, seven of them? Mm -hmm. where, where is our sheriff? Mm -hmm. We didn't even have one uh, county uh, metro around there. Usually they got 40 of them trying to put me in jail make sure I don't break out. Where were they yesterday? Hiding. You know, where was the governor? The where was his representative? Where was he? Just where was it. he yesterday? Just make an open invitation for the county commissioners <laughs> to be there tomorrow and Please the county sheriff there. also. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Anyway, I don't know where you're. you're you guys you might get, be now, let me tell you, you guys voted them in. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I made a mark on it. But you, you people <coughs> voted these people in. That's all I can say. And we need better. We need to, Nevada deserves better. Western lands are in trouble. Mm -hmm. And you know they're not really in trouble because of the politics expectations. Why is the West Western land in trouble? I want you to answer that question for me. Why is the vet Western lands in trouble? Because of the because minerals of the and resources under the ranches and the farms, and because of most control Montana the land, you control the people. Like Clinton Foundation, the people keep standing the, their shackles. Mm -hmm. The okay. farmers and the ranchers themselves. Mm -hmm. That's right. But, uh, answer, ask that question. Answer that question again for me. Who signs? Because the people keep signing their own shadows. Right? The ranchers, the ranchers. Keep signing the grazing permits. Uh, why are you Why are you signing grazing permits? Don't you own those rights? Yeah. Let me just. I don't want to carry on on this very very far, but the present grazing uh, uh, fee for one AUM is. Let me ex just explain. One AUM is one animal unit. That's one cow per. Uh, for one month's fee, that's supposedly what an AUM is. <clears throat> and the federal government has fee for an AUM on the public land, supposedly, is a dollar uh, seven or sixty-nine. Dollar? One dollar. Is that I'm right on that? I'm not 100% yeah, sure. Right. They're dollar sixty, dollar seventy. Uh, yeah, somewhere. I think it's a dollar sixty-seven uh, or sixty-nine. So that's all they're asking to feed one cow for a whole month. Now on private property, that price would be say twenty dollars for that AUM. So on the on the supposedly this public land, you can buy it for a dollar uh, uh, sixty-seven. Yeah. On private land, you can buy it for twenty dollars. 
And if you bought baled hay for $200 a ton, which is pretty fair price uh, for a, a ton of, uh, say, alfalfa hay, it would cost you $90 to feed that cow. So let's think about this. A dollar sixty-seven, twenty dollars, or ninety dollars to feed one cow for one month. Man, is the government crazy? I mean, why would they sell their feed if they own the feed, and if they own the land, and if they own the water that that the cows going to drink? We only talked about the feed, but we haven't talked about any. So now we've got, uh, well, why is the government only charging us this dollar and 67 cents? It's a symbolic uh, that they, that's really the, they the authority. They it's stamped it. upon the ranchers through taxation. Okay, they call it tax. You can call it tax. You can say if they want to show their authority. Well, they get you to sign that They permit. want you to sign the contract. But let me tell you, the contract, yeah. what, what's wrong? The ranchers not realizing they have rights. I'm, I'm going to... What what rights does the rancher has out on, on your public land? What rights rights does the rancher have out on your public land? Grazing rights. They have the forage feed. They have water. They have access rights. They have range improvements like like the crails and the fences and the water troughs. And then number five, they have all the rights that you guys have. Okay, to be able to go out there and, and fish use. and camp and city, ride your bicycle, whatever you want to do. The rancher still has that right, but you people all have that right. Now, who owns the property? We the people. Okay, we the people of who? The Sarkis. Okay, let me, this is, this is sort of important. We the people of New York thinks they own this private, or this public <laughs> land. No, and, no, and, no. and we the people up in uh, Elko County thinks so we own this public land. But how in the heck can that happen? How can the nation own this? Or even the, even the international government wants a piece of this land. But who really owns this land? Under our we constitution. We the people of Nevada. Who would? We the people of Nevada. Yeah, but it is. Clark, Clark County, County, Nevada. Okay, now, exactly. okay, now we say we the people of Nevada should own this land. Well, I can sort of agree with that. Clark County. But, but, but look, we have a Clark County border around here. I want to ask you, what power does our Clark, our account, Clark County Sheriff have when he walks over to the Lincoln County line? None. What power does our county commission have when they walk over the Lincoln County line? None. Zero. Why would we have a line there? We the people in Clark County elected these people. We the people in Clark County pay these people for their service. And their service is to protect our life, liberty, and property. So why wouldn't we claim the land? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is Clark County, Nevada's land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bundy might own rights on there, but he don't own the land. What rights does Bundy own over on Bundy Ranch? He owns the forage. You guys don't own no forage rights on that land. I own them. And how come I own them? I've either bought them or inherited them. And then rights are all created mm -hmm. through beneficial use. In other words, back to when the pioneers first come in here, the first ones that used that water, when they unbuckled his a team, horse's team, off his wagon, he was thirsty. And he took the horse up to the creek or the spring or whatever and give the horse a drink of water. When that horse very first sip, very first drop of water he drank out of that spring, guess what he was doing? Claiming it. Cre creating beneficial use of a renewable resource. And Nevada law says what? Whoever has the first beneficial use, uh, that, that's how his water rights established. Oh, right. So the water rights I have on Bundy Ranch were all created by somebody by first beneficial use. Preemptive rights created through beneficial use, backed up by Nevada law. Or did the federal government uh, uh, get any uh, preemptive rights? Are they allowed to own cows? <coughs> no. Nope. No. So, so go back to the answer to the question as to, to why they only charge $1.60. Yeah, mm -hmm. the government, 
I'll do that. Why do they only charge a dollar sixty-seven for an AUF? They try to keep the prices down. It's the hook. It's a hook, and they try to keep the prices down because then they benefit on the other end. The reason is is because well, I, I, want, I don't want to get this complicated, but, but one time back in 1934, in, a, in a mar Western America, there were lots of ranchers. There were a lots of ranchers that had created beneficial use. And so you take that map there, and they were ranchers all over the state of Nevada that w had cattle, and they had sheep. And one rancher said, I, I, this is my ranch here, and I, I got uh, right here, I, owe, I got the water, I do all this. And here comes a 5,000 sheep across his ranch. And the neighbor's cows come in on his ranch, and then the cow come in on his ranch, and so they're having a range war. Who's the range war between? Between the ranchers, the sheep herders and the, the cow map. Well, that was a, wasn't the Nevada problem. That was also happening in Utah and Wyoming and New Mexico and California and on and on. It was an interstate problem. And so the government really had a, a, a constitutional right to be involved here just a little bit. And so what they did is basically the ranchers hired the federal government to adjudicate their, their rights. And right now, if you go to the BLM's office, you could come up with a map and it would show all of these adjudicated rights. And Bundy would have an adjudicated right on that map. Who knows what adjudication means? You have the jurisdiction over it. Jurisdiction, and you proved something. You proved, one thing, you have water rights, and there was two ways that you proved up on your grazing uh, uh, rights. One is you had to have water. Remember if I talked about water? The other thing is you needed uh, some private land. Like I own 160 acres of private land. You either it was done two ways. You either had to have water rights in the state of Nevada, or you had to have some private property. That way you hook your grazing rights to the to that well, either me, water or or land. Let me explain adjudication a little bit. Adjudication is the process to settle a dispute if two people are claiming, two or more, are claiming rights upon the same land or the same water. So adjudication is a, is a process to decide, okay, Rancher A owns this or this percentage and Rancher B owns that. And so the adjudication is simply the, the dividing up, the deciding as to who owns what. Mm -hmm. So that ends, when it's adjudicated then, it ends the conflicts that these range wars were created. And what mm -hmm. my father was just explaining is those adjudications were based upon base property and or water rights that were established and, and certain different aspects were the basis for that adjudication. Mm -hmm. Jay, now let me uh, just talk just a little bit more here. How was this, who did this adjudication? What, did the federal government do the adjudication? Did the state do the adjudication? Did the uh, county do the adjudication? No, none of those people did the adjudication. They were uh, grazing boards formed. A nominated ranchers was put on a committee, and they judged where the lines were and how many cattle supposed to go on those in that area. The the rancher theirself and their committee did that. And what did they pay the government for? They paid the government for three different things. They paid the government to monitor these uh, 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 sort of like juries, the, the committees, the grazing boards, you call them. And they also paid them to paid surveyors to survey them. To map it out. And the uh, third thing was that BLM was supposed to map it and keep record. And record, yes. And so the, the government, that was four things, but basically the government was supposed to keep records, survey it, and monitor. And they signed contracts with the federal government for that purpose. That was done a lot of years ago, probably by the early 60s, 1960s, this was all done. But what did the rancher do? Well, it was he kept a sign in the Kate. bottom of these contracts, calling it permits, calling it license, calling it privilege, mm -hmm. calling it we're paying for grass, we're, we're renting land. All of those things are wrong. 
the government, federal, BLM, Bureau of Land Management, is only being paid 12.5% of that uh, $1.67, seven or 12 and a half percent which amounts to 22.31 i think cents is all the federal government's paid for uh, AUM. okay so let me make that clear 22.3 cents per cow per month is not buying the feed That's right. okay it was simply for the management or those 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 three or four things to to monitor the grazing boards to keep the records to survey and to map okay those four things were the only things that that the BLM or were being paid for the BLM does not own the land they do not own the feed these supposed grazing fees do not pay for feed they pay for those services only now those services were completed clear back in the 60s is that correct and so at this point there's no longer a need for those fees. Mm -hmm. The problem is is that now they've it construed it into something that it's not mm -hmm. and now they claim they're claiming ownership, they're claiming all these these things that are not right. Mm -hmm. You guys just got a really great civic lesson. Mm -hmm. Remember what you just learned? Don't sign a contract. He's gotta go back to with an attorney. <laughs> do you think this had anything to do with uranium cloud? You know those things are questionable. Definitely uh, like with the Harry Reid thing and Clark County thing, uh, they wanted Bundy Rice for mitigation for the tortoise and other endangered species. And really what that means is we want to put a bunch of solar panels down here, say to by searchlight, and we need a place to say we're taking care of the turtles, so they're going to use Bundy Ranch for that. Now, whether they wanted to put a solar system on Bundy Ranch, that's questionable. Clyven. I got, I got Thank you, Cliven. Thank, Thank you, Cliven. Thank you. Uh, or have they got it tied up so tight that I don't know. I'm going to check in and I Out of your area? You should get right. it. Well, if no one else is making benefits of use, then we're the only one that's in a position to do that.